What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 53 of the Stand Up Guys podcast. I'm your host, Incomparable Zach Jones, joined as always by, let's see, the John Boy Walton to my Jason Walton, Lester Jones. And they're all the same to me. <laughs> <laughs> And and will I use every combination of the Walton brothers because I'm lazy? <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> and of course, it wouldn't be our show if we didn't have the ninth wonder, Chocolate Thunder, eating that stink eye and getting that pink eye, lover of the vag and the tarnished sheriff's badge. He's got two for the pink, one for the stink, tattooing the ladies with his Indian ink, the phenomenal A.J. Singh. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it hasn't been too many days since we recorded our last episode. Have you guys done anything amazing within that time? <laughs> I don't even remember, like, yesterday. <laughs> I've been working every day for a while, and so it gets just one big, like, smear of shit. Oh, I did have some bad news today. Ooh. My company is going back to wearing masks. But it's oh, completely oh, fucking ridiculous. Delta variant. Is it? The, yeah, I was gonna say, is it? Is it the Delta or the Lambda? Well, it yeah. seems like whatever California does, like our governor wants to follow suit right no. away. So, so it's California gone back to masks like everywhere in public or what? I'm not sure. I think they did do something with masks. I'm not sure all the details. I wonder if my work will go back because they were doing it for a while, but they haven't announced anything. Well, I don't think they're going to enforce it, but just like the people apparently that own my building are just pushovers, and they're just like, yeah, okay, that sounds great. Mm. Uh, so everybody that goes into your building has to wear a mask? Yeah, we're going to start enforcing masks again. Oh. So depressing. Is this episode 52? Is this the year? 53. This is 53. Oh, we, we, we didn't do anything last time. Well, I no mean, ep- episode 50 was kind of our, you know. Man. Man, <laughs> I blame you guys because I, I don't pay attention. <laughs> but yes, we had our, our one year anniversary one way or the other. Um, all right, you guys been uh, watching anything? Uh, uh, me and my mom watched John Wick together last night. She <laughs> Your never, mom watched it? She never seen it before. Oh my like, God, what'd she think? She loved it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Your she, mom? She hated the bad guys, you know, they were easy to hate. So she was like, yeah, kill them. <laughs> man, that, yeah, you kill a puppy, man. Yeah. You just have it coming to you. Yeah. It's funny though. I, like I wouldn't necessarily peg your mom for like a fan of that like action movie, but that's she cool. She normally isn't, but uh, you know, I told her it's such a good story. It's so fun. She was like, "All right, I'll watch it with you." And then she watched it. And she was like, "Oh yeah, this is a fun story. I like this." <laughs> nice. <laughs> She's like, if only they broke into song 50 times, <laughs> it would be a perfect movie. <laughs> uh, what about you? You watching anything? I don't remember. I'm sure I watched something. I don't remember shit. Oh, I know what you watched because I, I only I watched just the first episode of uh, the new He-Man cartoon on Netflix. And, like, it was fine. I don't know if I'll go back for more, but I know you watched a little bit of it. Well, I watched one and part of one, and I'm just trying. I kind of want to give it, like, a good chance. Like, I just want to say, well, you know, a lot of things start a little slow, and, like, they kind of find their groove. So I do want to watch a little bit more, just kind of give it a chance to see what if it builds into anything interesting. Yeah. It does seem like a little passion project, so. It's one of those things where, like, I listen to a bunch of Kevin Smith podcasts, and, like, he talks incessantly about it, which makes you kind of want to check it out. Right. But yeah, I watched episode one, and it's it's not like bad or anything. I was just kind of like, eh, I don't know. It didn't. Yeah, it's not. It didn't. Us, it didn't really grab yet. me that much. But we'll see. I might give it uh, give it more of a chance. And then the only other thing is, uh, you guys have been talking about Rick and Morty, so mm-hmm. I, I went back. I, apparently, I had watched three seasons, so now I've started season four. I only watched like two episodes, but but uh, yeah, you guys were talking about it, so I was like, yeah, I guess it's time to get back into Rick and Morty. Um, all right, but yeah, uh, nothing much else going on. Like I said, it's because uh, we recorded late last week and we're recording earlier this week. It hasn't been that long since we recorded, so so. No. Have you guys heard anything about the uh, Masters of the Universe show? Is that the same? That yeah, that's the same thing. He man, oh, people are really. Uh, hating on the whole 
people. I think the main protagonist is a female character. <laughs> well, something happens to He Man, like, and uh, like she's kind of in charge for a while. So I guess that's part of the story arc. But mm. yeah, they're not happy about it. I guess. Well, I don't know because like before the show even came out, like some nerdy He Man fans were like, "We can tell by the trailers that this show's not about He Man. It's like, about Tila or whatever." Mm. And like Kevin Smith has been defending himself, you know, for these last couple of weeks saying. Like it is about He Man. You just gotta wait and watch it. So and so, I don't. I don't know. I I haven't watched enough. But well, well, I don't I care about like, He Man enough to give a, yeah, a shit. You know. Yeah. Well, the original. I think He Man was like, you know, he defeated Skeletor like a billion times. So, you know, he wanted to give him like a, a true fight and like give Skeletor his like moment in the sun. Oh, I see. So, it's a little break from tradition, but I, I'm sure it'll come. Full circle. I mean, the original He-Man series, they said, was like a shameless, just like excuse to sell toys. Mm. It didn't have much artistic integrity, I don't <laughs> believe. <laughs> really, a nineteen eighties cartoon? <laughs> They'd try anything in the eighties and see see what sold. I know that was a crazy thing about the eighties and really a large part of the nineties is like they would just green light. Any cartoon idea, they would tr- make a cartoon out of the strangest shit. <laughs> and the toys were always the shittiest quality, too. Like, they fall yeah, apart so most easily. Of them. <laughs> they just want to get get one season out, get a batch of us sales, yeah. and, and move on. <laughs> but they're, It was so weird. It's like, wow, oh, Macaulay Culkin's hot. Wish Kid. <laughs> Remember that cartoon? <laughs> and then, like, uh, John Candy's hot. Well, he's a camp counselor. Oh, and yeah, Camp Candy. Camp Candy. And, like, uh, God. Like, I almost want to find, like, a good website that just has a list of, like, all those cartoons. And just take, a like, a nostalgic look and see, like, how many of those I remember. Because, yeah, there were... Yeah, we watched some like crazy shit. I remember. <laughs> you remember some I don't remember. I don't remember some of those. Yeah. Remember that? Uh, like, we never watched sports, but there was like a one called like All Stars or something, and it was like Wayne Gretzky, Bo Jackson, and like someone else, and they like went on adventures together. Yeah, it was like some weird shit. Hmm. That's funny. <laughs> Make me try to remember who the third person was now. <laughs> I don't know sports well because Bo Jackson was a. Uh... Well, baseball and basketball? Yeah. And then like you had your hockey. Pele or somebody? <laughs> I don't no, think no, it was it Pele. Soccer. It was an American. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who was uh, hot back then, but yeah. there was another one. <laughs> but yeah, man, yeah, the 80s and 90s had some weird cartoons, no, but, man. Was Bo Jackson with football? And... I think he was baseball and football. Yeah, and then they had someone else who was basketball. Jordan? Might have been Jordan. I don't think it would have been Jordan because I think this, it would have been too early before he hit his pay, like stride. Probably somebody, probably a basketball player that was really hot in like the eighties. Magic Johnson. Could have been. Larry Bird. Could have been. Could have been. Could have been. It might have been the Bird, man. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> These are questions that just can't be answered. <laughs> well, I do have the internet here, so let's answer it. <laughs> Uh, well, let's get this show on the road while you do that. Um, <clears throat> so for anyone who hasn't watched the show, we just go around and bring a topic and conversation up. C- could be anything. A lot of times we try to find like some weirder news stories that kind of slip through the cracks. But as tradition dictates, we usually start with AJ. So AJ, what do you got for us this week? I have, well, I want to start out with since uh, me and my mom watched John Wick together, uh, you know, based going off of that, let's do a John Wick quiz and see how much you guys know. Oh, about man. That. Does, does it require more than the very first movie? Uh, maybe. I'm <laughs> oh. not sure. <laughs> Fucked again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've, that's on you, man. You should have seen these I, movies. I've seen all the movies, but like, I don't know if I remember enough to really do good at this, but we'll, we'll see. I, I mean, this is. We'll, yeah, let's see. Um, John Wick is known by a monstrous nickname. What is it? Oh, God. Uh, the Baba Yaga. Yeah. Oh, wait. I didn't even let Lester pick. Yeah. He got it. <laughs> All right. Puppy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the death of John Wick's dog sets off the events of the movie. Murder. What? What was his assassination? Dog's, what was his dog's name? Cookie. Oh man, the dog's name. 
Uh, fuck. Um, Otis, I don't know. Probably something stupid like Buddy. Mm. Air Bud. Air Bud. Uh, it has no name. <laughs> the dog, I almost said that. The dog oh, no. Name. Actually, sorry, it does have a name. It's Daisy. Oh, Daisy. Oh, I thought I knew the answer. Um, what's the name of the man who not only steals John's car but kills his dog? There's a few options. I'll tell you these. Uh, Yosef Tarasov. Yosef. Okay. <laughs> uh, Zach, uh, Aurelio Vincenzo, uh, Winston Dance, or Santino D'Antonio? Um, what was the second one again? Uh, Winston Dance, Aurelio Vincenzo, or Vincenzo uh, Santino D'Antonio, and Yosef Tarasov. Oh, so you haven't, like, said if Lester's wrong yet? No, not yet. I remember he was, like, Russian or whatever, and Yosef, that one sounds the most I think I'm going to go with that one, too. Okay, yeah, that's correct. Okay. All right, part three uh, is subtitled Parabellum. What does the Latin phrase uh, that word comes from mean? Parabellum. Um, God. There's some options here. Let me read them out to you. Okay. I think I know it, but. <clears throat> All right. Uh, to those about to die, we salute you. Uh, before dis uh, death before dishonor. Uh, if you want peace, prepare for war. Fear the reaper. Uh, the third one. Uh, if you want peace, prepare for war. Yeah. I'll go with the second one. Death before dishonor. Okay. It is, if you want peace, prepare for war. So that got that one. Okay, what kind of car do they steal from John in the first movie? This isn't a multiple choice. A, co uh, it, a well, Cobra? It, yeah, yeah. Uh, a 2011 Dodge Charger, 1968 Dodge Charger, 1970 Chevelle. <laughs> SS. I thought they were all going to be Chargers. <laughs> <laughs> 1969 Mustang. I would go with Mustang. Um, I'm going to try the 68 Charger. Okay. It was the Mustang. Ah. We're tied? Ooh. Not unexpected. <laughs> What is the name of the hotel concierge in the three John Wick films? Penny's uh, Worth. Perseus, Zeus, Hades, Sharon. I thought it was a woman. No, it's a guy. The black guy. I'm going to guess Sharon. Uh, same again. Uh, Perseus, Zeus, Hades, Sharon. Perseus. It's Sharon. Uh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> John Wick has a tattoo that reads Fortis Fortuna Ediovat. What? Where on his body is the tattoo? On his arm, his back, his chest, or his neck? His chest. God, I don't know. I'm going to guess his back. It's his back. Mm. Nice. I didn't know that one. Ruby Rose plays a silent assassin on John Wick Chapter 2. What's her name? Ares, Thorn, Spike, or Wisp? Thorn. You know what? I'm going to guess Thorn as well. Ares. Oh. Uh, Trying to hold your edge by, by saying what I say. <laughs> <laughs> There's a story told in the first and second movie of John Wick killing three men with a common classroom item. What is that item? A pencil sharpener, a ruler, a stapler, or a pencil? I mean, pencil seems most dangerous. I'll go with pencil. Pencil does, but I'm losing. We're going to go with ruler. Yes, pencil. Mm. And the gap widens. <laughs> <laughs> John Leguizamo plays Aurelia. What does he do? Is he a, runs a chop shop? He's a gun sommelier? 
uh, assassin or a uh, mobster? I'll say he sells guns. I'm going to say chop shop. Chop shop. Mm. He's a fat, evil clown. <laughs> <laughs> Why did John owe a blood oath to Santino D'Antonio? D'Antonio saved John's life. D'Antonio uh, got, or is it D'Antonio? D'Antonio got John out of the assassin life. D'Antonio saved John's wife. D'Antonio is John's brother. I'm going to say he got him out of the life. Saved his life. He got him out of the assassin's life. Mm. You're getting thrashed right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> the Bowery King gives John a certain number of bullets. What's the number? One. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me give the options. One, five, seven, or twelve. I'm going to say seven. Signal one? That's seven. One shot, one kill, pussy. (laughs) (laughs) Man, why am I playing this? (laughs) (laughs) In John Wake 3, John fights two characters called Shinobi 1 and Shinobi 2 at the end of the film. What was unique about the set where they fought? It was underwater? It was all glass? It was on a rooftop. It was on fire. I'm going to say it was all glass. Fire? <laughs> it was all glass. <laughs> I mean, clearly Zach's seen the movie. You haven't, so <laughs> it's a one-armed fight for you. <laughs> yeah, or less. <laughs> In what city does John Wick meet up with Halle Berry, Sofia? Casablanca, Istanbul, Prague, or Lisbon? Rog. Um, I'm gonna say Casablanca. Casablanca. Mm. <laughs> I mean, all this is proving is that if you watch the movie, <laughs> 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 at least it's multiple choice. <laughs> yeah, we learn in John Wick three that John was born with a different name. What is it? Ilya Ravinov, Jardani Jovon- Jovonovich. Gregory Genova, Jarmira Rusikov. My dick's long. <laughs> <laughs> so let me repeat that. Ilya Ravenov, Jardani Jovonovich, Gregory Jovnova, Jarmira Rusikov. Jigori. Gregory? What was the first Jigori. one? Uh, Ilya Ravenov. It, I was thinking the Gregory one too, but I don't know. So I'll, I'll go with something. I'll, I'll say the Elia one. Yeah, yeah, okay. It is Jardani. Oh, wow. Jovano, Jovanovich. Both wrong. Mm-hmm. What is the name of the group that trained John Wick and assists him in John Wick 3? The Stasi, the Tarasov Russian Mafia, Yakuza, or Sicilian Mob? The first one. Stasi? Here. <sighs> Trying to think who assisted him. Yeah, I'm going to go with that one too, Stasi. Uh, it was the Tarasov Russian Mafia. Huh. Oh, are they the ones that own like the ballerina place? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, who played John Wick's wife, Helen? Bridget Moynihan, Ruby Rose, Adrian Palak- Palicki, or Halle Berry? Bridget Moynihan. You going with that? Yep. <laughs> you seem pretty confident. So. <laughs> Asia Kate Dillon plays one of the main antagonists in John Wick 3. What do they call her character? The Judge, the Viscount, the Adjudicator, or the Fox? The fox. The adjudicator. Yes, the adjudicator. <laughs> who, who in the fuck is passing on nicknames? <laughs> You're the adjudicator. <laughs> fuck, nobody knows what that word is. In John Wick 3, John gets attacked by a giant uh, man named Ernest in a library. Who plays Ernest? 
Ivan Topolsky, Boban Marjanovic, Matthew McGrory, or Andre Rusimov. This is a uh, this one's kind of unique because the guy is a basketball player in real life. I'm gonna go with Andre because Andre the Giant. Mm. I'm gonna say Ivan because I have no idea. That's yeah, Boban. <laughs> Boban Marjanovic. <laughs> What phrase do several characters say to John Wick after they have fallen to him in a fight? Be seeing you until next time, good fight, or whoa? Whoa! <laughs> I'm going to go with be seeing you. Joe, Joey Lawrence is fighting. <laughs> it's being be seeing you. <laughs> Which actor plays the hitman Cassian in John Wick Chapter 2? Lawrence Fishburne, Moe's Def, Common... Or Mark DeCoscos? Most deaf. Common. That sounds... Uh, it's common. Most deaf sounded confident. What is the name of the female assassin that tries to take out John in the Continental Grounds in the first movie? The Juntacator. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Perkins, Miss <laughs> White, Lilith, or the director? Hmm... Miss White. Miss Perkins. That's right. All right. I mean, I guess we could just call it <laughs> because. Thank God. <laughs> it's 15 oh. to 3. <laughs> you should have let him bone up on the on those movies before and yeah. did the quiz next Like, I don't even want, want to bone up on them. <laughs> They're fun movies. <laughs> They're great movies. I didn't like the first one. I didn't want to uh, watch more. You didn't like the first one. like, oh. What you, did the you felt like the story was just too like simple and basic or something or what? I don't know. I think I was just bored. Too much action for you? That's a frequent problem for me. Uh, the the thing about it is though, I think they do give you enough to invest in the character, and then I just feel like the actual like uh, gun and fighting choreography in those movies is like so slick, like it's entertaining to yeah, watch. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sold on choreography. Oh, pro stars was Michael Jordan. Really? Does it say the years it like aired? Uh, I can't believe they got Michael Jordan to do it. It was called show. Pro Stars. TV series nineteen ninety one. Oh, ninety one. Pro Stars. But did did they actually do the voices of themselves, or was it? I like think other... they might have. It vaguely seems like they did. I don't remember. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> Um, all right, are we all ready for Manifesto Round 1? Uh, okay, I was running short on news this week, so we're going with body modifications. Okay. So, uh, start at the bottom, work our way up. A guy got this, uh, like, pin-up tattoo, and then he had him give her fake boobs. So he had, his tattoo had fake boob implants, which his body rejected, and he had to have... Reduced. <laughs> <laughs> a fake, fake boob reduction in my life. That's quite a story. <laughs> he 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 could have like moved it up so like his balls were the boobs. <laughs> uh, you don't want to get your your ta- your your cherries tattooed. Probably <laughs> corset piercing. I've seen pictures of these. I've never seen anyone with them. But you get like a series of. Uh, piercings down your back and then you can put rings in them and lace put a lace why? in there yeah i don't know why apparently they get infected a lot that's wow. a gross, gross oh, picture there's a plus okay so here's one people get like implants like they go below their skin they put like a metal post or something with threads on it and then they can like screw like little horns or spikes or shit into them which apparently they're prone to infection as well. Oh, <laughs> my God. I'm beginning to see a theme. Here. Yeah. I mean, I've seen like the lizard guy and other people that get like the things that make like their skin protrude out, you know? Right. That's an under the skin. Image. I don't know if I've seen the screw on horns, but I, get, I guess that you can have a different horn for every day or whatever. Right. So, do you guys remember when they grew the, the ear on the mouse? Yeah. Uh, some dude grew an ear on his arm as like a. Um, artistic statement i mean how did he get like because that would take like a scientist to do wouldn't it? i think he, he i think he said he had it grown maybe in a lab 
Uh, what, it was grown in the lab, and then he just had it somehow implanted on or on something. under his skin? Oh, that's weird. Yeah, it was grown in a lab from cultured cells. So, yeah. Subdermal implants you were talking about. People put shit under their skin, little bumps, or right. even shapes like hearts and stars and just random crap. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Extra ocular implant. So they can take these little pieces of crap and like put them in your eye and it just looks like graffiti crap in like the white of your eyes. And there's another one where they will inject dye into the white of your eyes to make it different colors. Wow. Yeah, I've seen people that... I thought it was like a tattoo thing, but they made it so like their eyes are like all black. And I'm like, that seems painful. Yeah, it's painful. basically like injecting ink into the whites of your eyes. I, I can't I can't imagine getting a shot in my eyeball. Mm. Yeah. Well, when our granddad, he was like losing his vision. He had, I don't know if he had like macular degeneration or something. I don't remember what it was, but yeah, he did have to get a shot he'd in his eyeball. He had to go in and like get a shot in his eyeball. He said it didn't really hurt, but you could mm. like hear like the... <laughs> like the the tissue like kind of like crackling as they push the needle into his eyeball. So yeah, that's not kind of gross. <laughs> I can't imagine it not hurting like a son of a bitch. No, it's strange. I, I got the LASIK surgery and they like kind of like la- like peel off your uh, your cornea. Yeah, cornea, and it do- you don't feel it at all. And then really. they put it back. Yeah. Oh, I, d- I didn't know you got LASIK. Huh? huh? How was that like process? Very fast. Like took like ten minutes or fifteen minutes to do. How expensive I, I was that. it? I was like four hundred. You had it done in India, though. Yeah, right? yeah. Oh, so you got it done like Cheap. a lot cheaper. Mm-hmm. Huh. Cool. I think it was four hundred for me and my sister total. Jeez. Yeah. America. <laughs> Any more body modifications? There, there's a couple more. The last <laughs> one's the best one. So magnetic implants. People have like. Uh, like magnets implanted under their fingers and stuff. And then they can like pick up metal stuff or they can even feel like the magnetic field in a room. So they could like go up to the wall and feel like where the electric lines are running and stuff like that. I feel like that'd be bad for your phone if you had that like Yeah, you would think that'd be a little sketchy possibly. Yeah. Wouldn't you always just be getting like paper clips and shit stuck to you? It, it sounds like Probably a nuisance. Crap, it yeah. sounds like a nuisance. Yeah. I I'd want to go with like my non dominant hand, I think. <laughs> You get, like, knives coming in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Seems like a stupid idea. Last but not least, genital beading. I knew it was going to be genital something. So this is, like, related to the subdermal implants, except they're putting, like, beads and stuff, like, on your dick under the skin. And basically the process is, like, they cut a little incision, they pry the skin away from the meat, they like stuff like a bead or something random in there, and yeah. So the the idea is like you can be ribbed for her pleasure. So I mean, at least this one serves a function, but it's never would I do that. No, that's horrible. <laughs> I imagine you could gain a little a uh, little girthage that way too, right? Yeah, yeah. To put a little. Uh, I don't know. It's making me think. <laughs> <laughs> a little heart under the. The skin of your dick. <laughs> That's true love. Put some magnets in there too. Yeah. <laughs> Just for good measure. <laughs> Keep getting stuck to her rings and stuff. I can really feel the magnetic field. Yeah, you like pull out the Nuva ring and everything. With <laughs> I always point true north. <laughs> <laughs> you always know which way you're going. <laughs> if you guys had to get one of these... What, what, which one would you get? The last one. <laughs> the last one? Yeah. <laughs> the tattoo with boob implants, I think, is pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't. Definitely not the corset. Not the ear. <laughs> yeah, none of the, all these sound terrible. I, I, I would consider the magnetic one, actually. Really? Like, I just think it'd be curious. It's like a new sense, like, you know. Something completely different. I just feel like it's gonna get you in some sort of yeah. trouble. Get stuck to his genital bumps. <laughs> <laughs> you like walk past like power lines and like things just start going off. Right. <laughs> oh yeah.
Yeah, and you wouldn't want to go through, like, how do you get through a metal detector? Oh, yeah, that'd be a fun one to explain to the TSA. I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I have magnets in my hands. <laughs> the ones in your dick better not have metal in them. <laughs> yeah, you'll be getting a pat down. <laughs> you'll get a hand job going to TSA like that. <laughs> oh, man. Was that all for that one? Yeah. All right. This story here, like when I first just read the headline, I was like, I, I, I was like, I don't really understand what it's trying to say here, but we'll get into it. So headline is unknown man is calling libraries to masturbate to court case. Now, does that tell you <laughs> really what it's about? But here we go. Uh, there's, <clears throat> there's really no way around how bizarre this is. So let's just cut to the chase. An unidentified man is calling libraries around the country so he can masturbate to a court case. The shtick is always the same. A phone rings at the library and the librarian picks it up in a friendly, how can I help you? On the other or on the other end is a man who wants information about a court case, specifically the Brady v. Maryland case from 1963. He'll claim that he doesn't have a computer and ask the librarian to read the case file out loud so he can take notes. By the way, He's getting some patient ass librarians. Yeah. Like, I would just say, no, like, get fucked. I'm not going to read you this thing over the phone, but. He claims what his internet's not working? Um, he's, he says he doesn't have a computer. Um, as the librarian reads the file, it soon becomes clear that the man is enjoying what he's hearing a bit too much. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's pleasuring himself to the text of the court decision. In case the heavy breathing and other noises don't make it apparent, he'll also say such wonderful things as, oh, Oh, yeah, give it to me. Give me that exculpatory evidence. Spank those prosecutors. Uh, look, don't even ask us to explain this. Uh, I, I do wonder if this guy's just like more of a prankster, but I don't know. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Um, like we said, this hasn't been a one-time thing either. The man has harassed librarians in several states and apparently will continue to do so until someone stops him. One anonymous librarian detailed their encounter with the court case pervert on their blog. He's called multiple libraries and done this, and the FBI is supposedly involved and can't catch the pervert that's just calling libraries and getting off on librarians reading about some random court case they wrote. The serial masturbator also struck up the librarian's own workplace. Luckily enough, they found a way to shut him down. Apparently, the dude called my work, and I wasn't there for it, but they put him on hold because they were like, is it him? The librarian explained. Uh, so they got a male coworker to answer the phone, and he immediately hung up. Apparently, it just doesn't tickle him if the man if a man is reading the court case. <laughs> Another librarian. He's not a gay person. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Another librarian replied to the post, but this person had actually talked to the pervert. I talked to him. He. He is, he is absolutely masturbating while you read the court case. The second librarian confirmed he has hit multiple libraries across the country. He called my library twice and another local library last week. <laughs> God, this guy's <laughs> like a, a mass masturbator. He's got like a, the library yellow pages. <laughs> <laughs> this may not be the first time the man has terrorized libraries. According to a post uh, on the Library Think Tank Facebook group, a similar thing happened a few years back. Uh, quote, does anyone remember the guy who used to call libraries asking for John Grisham titles to be read to him out loud? I was a victim of that uh, more than eight years ago, and I think he just called again. A whole John, a whole so he's, John he's Grisham He's been doing this for like a decade. At least. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook user Jess Stevens wrote, this time he wanted an entire Wikipedia page read to him. So I'm just forewarning anyone that anyone calling for information on Brady v. Maryland should not be taken seriously. <laughs> uh, by now you might be wondering what's so special about the brady v maryland case do the case files detail some kind of sexual assault or is it just a case concerning pornography perhaps and that's the weirdest thing about this there's absolutely nothing about brady v maryland that uh, anyone should uh, write or that anyone should find remotely titillating it's pretty much your uh bog standard court case uh concerning the ju judiciary process it, it's significant in the sense uh, that in it, the U.S. Supreme Court determined that the prosecution must hand over all evidence that could exonerate a defendant to the defense. Uh, did that get you all hot and bothered? Yeah, it didn't do it for us either. Even the case behind the Brady v. Maryland decision isn't sexy in any conceivable way. It's about two men who were sentenced to death for the 1958 first-degree murder of an older man. 
The prosecution didn't deliver to the defense certain documents establishing that one of the defendants hadn't participated in the actual murdering business itself. As a result, that man got his death sentence commuted to life in prison. Now, did that turn you on? If it did, please keep it to yourself. We really don't want to know. Um, hopefully someone puts a stop to this library pervert soon. Until then, if you're a librarian, beware of the phone calls. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it just it amazes me, number one, that the guy's doing it. But number two, that there's so many librarians that are like like so patient they'll be like oh yeah no problem i'll, I'll read this very very long document to you yeah, over the phone that was so amazing to me i don't i i try not to get in people's way like to bother them and <laughs> I know. ask for something like that that's wild well if you never ask you'll never know <laughs> can i have a million dollars like what <laughs> you guys like phone sex is expensive i'm calling the library yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You could ask, at least ask for something slightly interesting. Maybe he really doesn't have a computer. He's like, well, I can't get porn, so this is the next best And then thing. just simultaneously a woman's voice also really excites him at the same time. <laughs> and <laughs> apparently boring court cases as well. <laughs> It'd be like, I don't know, do you have a copy of Women's Erotica uh, 2004? <laughs> There's a certain article I'm really interested in. <laughs> Yes, oh, yeah. I can help you. <laughs> oh yeah, he's he's having her read like those cheesy like women's romance novels with like Fabio on the yeah, cover or something. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you know what's funny uh, is last week's episode the the I the title had the word genitals in it. And I don't know if this is our um like podcast host or Apple podcast where I like listen to the podcast. But it blurred out the word genitals. It just had the, the G and the S and then all stars in between. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, that's a scientific word. And, like, I'm pretty sure I've had other episodes, like, that had the word boobies in it and, like, one that had the word shit in it. And I don't think those were blurred like that. I'm like, this is fucking strange. Yeah, who knows what the, the standards on some of those things turn out to be. Pretty much just random. <laughs> I think I heard. Um, uh, I was listening to uh, uh, Sarah Silverman once on a podcast, and she said she was playing like words with friends. Uh, that game with I've like heard of somebody, it. and there's like a little like chat function where you is, can. Talk is it to like them. the equivalent of Scrabble? Or yeah, something? yeah, yeah. And I think she's like in the chat function. Um, said the word labia, and they did the same thing. Oh, right. <laughs> and, and so, it, it, like, innocuous, like, scientific words, you know, not even curse words, and they did that. So it's, it's kind of funny. Mm. I think uh, on TikTok, the word, the word Asian women is actually censored. <laughs> what? Why? Yeah, because it, it's been so, used for porn too it's, many Yeah, times. it's used for, like, sexual stuff, like, so much that it's, like... You know, like a a bad word now. <laughs> Nobody wants to see Asian women in any other context. <laughs> it's so strange. I know. I think of just porn when I think of Asian women. I mean, do they do that with every, like if you type in black women? Is it the same thing? No, Asian women. See, that's racist if they don't. <laughs> if they specifically like go say Asian women is not okay. But no, everyone else, like yeah. we're not sexualizing anybody else. Just Asian women. Yeah. That's so strange, man. It's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, AJ, it's time for your story number two. All right, I'll wait, about... is it, can you uh, quiz us on something else that I know much better than? Him? Actually, I can. That was an ego. <laughs> no, okay. Go for your story. Go for your... Really creamed him. <laughs> Go for your story. All right, uh... my favorite type of competition. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this one, uh, I think Lester might have a better chance in, to be honest. Ooh. Uh, it's comic books and graphic novels quiz. Oh, you yeah, actually are doing it. We could both be. Okay. It depends what comics, because we read kind of different sets of uh, stuff. Now, is this multiple choice, or is it just whoever says first? Multiple or? choice. Now, do you want us to do like we did with John Wick, where like we both pick one? Like, there's no time limit? Yeah. Or Okay, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, in Watchmen, what superhero name does Adrian Veidt use? Night Owl, Ozymandias, Rorschach, or Superman? Adrian, Adrian I want to think that was Ozymandias. Yeah, Ozymandias. That's correct. All right, one for one, both of you. 
who is the hero of Akira Toriyama's Dragon Ball series? Goku, Hero, Bulma, or Yamcha? I, I think I've seen a fair amount about Goku, but I have not uh, See, partaken. Yeah, I've heard the name Goku, but I don't know if it's associated with that or not. But I, I will. I'll go with Goku. Yeah, I've heard that name too. Yeah, it's Goku. Okay, it's like it's the one I've heard. So <laughs> <laughs> he's like the Michael Jordan of anime or something. <laughs> uh, what is the name of Tintin's scientist friend? Professor Calculate, Professor Know It All, Professor Calculus, Professor Algebra. I've al- I almost picked up Tintin one time. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I I watched the cartoon ones, but I don't remember if that character is even in it. I'll go with the know-it-all one, I guess. I'll go with the Algebra. It's Professor Calculus. Damn. Okay. I would have gone with Algebra, too. What's the name of the new Asterix book? Asterix and the Poles, Asterix and the Peruvians, Asterix and the Picts, Asterix and the Pickaxe. I've never read Asterix. I don't even, it's not even striking a bell for me. I've, I've heard of it, but I don't really know what it is. I think I'm it's gonna, like a European book. I'm going to go with Peruvian. I, I was gonna, <laughs> damn it, I was going to go with, uh, I'll pick something up. What were the other choices again? Uh, Asterix and the Poles, Asterix and the Picts, Asterix and the Pix- Pickaxe. Um, the Pits. Okay. It is the Picts. Oh. <laughs> okay. Sin City. Sin City is a nickname. What is the real city's name, or the city's real name? Huh. Uh, Boston City, Center City, Basin City. Nonsense city. I'm gonna I almost have to say Center City. I'm gonna guess it could be Boston. I'm gonna guess Basin City. Basin City is correct. Wow. Yeah, I don't I wasn't sure I about that. Recollection of that. I thought it was Sin City. <laughs> Persepolis is a story of a young girl growing up in which country? Palestine. Ir- Iran, Iraq, England, or Afghanistan? Wait, can you name them again? Iran, Iraq, England, or Afghanistan? I have to go with Iran. Um, I'm going to go with Iran as well. Yeah, all right. Who is the central pro- protagonist of The Walking Dead? Rick Grimes, Frank Grimes, Dale Horvath... Or Lacey Green. Rick Grimes. Yeah. Good old Rick. Yep. Rick Tatorship. You can't protect your Rick. How old is Calvin in Calvin and Hobbes? Ooh. Five, six, eight, or 24? I'm going to go with six. Eight? Six. Mm-hmm. It's a close one. What creatures represent the Nazis in Mao's? Cats. Uh, cats, rats, dogs, or pigs? You say cats? Cats. cats. Okay. Yeah, that one's really good. I really like that one. It's cats. What newspaper does Clark Kent work for? The Daily Planet, The Daily Bugle, Daily Tattler, The Guardian? Daily Planet. Daily Planet. Yeah. I need that one, too. All right. Well, uh, Zach, you won by one, man, eight to seven. Nice. He copied me like three times, though. <laughs> I got lucky on the asterisk one because that one was a shit house yeah, guess. That one. Yeah, that was a good one. Well, a little better. Slightly vindicated. <laughs> All right, manifesto round two. All right. North Carolina. North Carolina doctor sought two hours of sex per month with a nurse in a blackmail plot. So apparently he recorded her. She was on the phone with somebody else. And it doesn't really go into her details, but it sounds like probably like a lover of hers or something because he was threatening to ruin her marriage Mm. if she didn't have sex with him for two hours every month. Two hours? That's like 300 times. (laughs) (laughs) I had to make that joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what uh, it's on one twenty divided by thirty. 
four, four times a day. <laughs> I mean, two hours of sex a month is not that much, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she just she uh, yeah. turned him in. <laughs> Did Good. not work. Yeah. That was a short story. You got anything else? <laughs> I like to keep them short and sweet. <laughs> a little too short. <laughs> we could cut this show down to 15 minutes. <laughs> Maybe people would watch. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I definitely put on some weight during the old pandemic that I'd like to get off. And they got a new uh, a diet uh, thing here. A new diet tool forces your mouth shut with magnets. <laughs> that sounds fun. If you've ever been on a diet, you've likely been tempted to just give up and treat yourself to something tasty. Maybe you've even wished you could uh, weld your mouth shut to make sure you uh, won't give in to temptation. Well, now you can. But be warned, the solution seems more like it belongs in an encyclopedia of medieval torture devices. Uh, UK researchers working uh, together with the University of Otago from New Zealand have developed a new kind of weight loss device. Suppose it's easy to lose weight when you literally can't eat. The Dental Slim Diet Control, as the device is called, consists basically of a couple of strong magnets. Once a dentist locks them to the back of your teeth, you won't be uh, gorging yourself since you can barely open your mouth at all. It is fitted by a dentist, can be released by the user in case of emergency, and can be repeatedly fitted and removed, uh, said Professor Paul Brunton, lead researcher on the Dental Slim and uh, Pro Vice Chancellor at the University of Otago Health Sciences. It allows the wearer to open their mouths only about 2 millimeters, restricting them to a liquid diet. But it also allows free speech and how to free speech and doesn't restrict breathing, he explained. So, yeah, if you ever wanted to lose weight by uh, being forced to eat only water thin soup, definitely go for this thing. According to Brunton, his team was inspired to create the device to try and battle global obesity. He said it's intended to help people who need to lose weight to establish new eating habits. The main barrier for people for successful weight loss is compliance. This helps them establish new habits, allowing them to comply with a low-calorie diet for a period of time, says Brunton. It really kickstarts the process, he summarized. Uh, Brunton added that according to recent studies, 1.9 billion adults worldwide are overweight. He believes that psychological issues such as shame, depression, and low self-esteem may prevent some of them from kicking the habit of overeating. The dental slim is supposed to be a safer option than more tra traditional methods, such as weight loss surgeries. Uh, it is a non-invasive, reversible, economical, and attractive alternative to surgical procedures, Brunton said. The fact is there are no adverse consequences with this device, he added. Suppose that's true, that is, if you don't uh, count having your mouth forced shut as adverse. Still, we've tried uh, wiring people's mouths shut to induce weight loss before. The procedure AHS existed since the 1980s, but so far there have uh, always been adverse consequences. For example, if you happen to throw up without being able to open your mouth, it's very easy to choke to death. That would be terrible. Additionally, additionally people have developed a gum disease and acute uh, psychiatric conditions from being unable to open their mouths. Dental Slim supposedly does away with all that since the user can release the device at will. The beauty of it is that once patients are fitted with advice, after two or three weeks, they can have the magnets disengaged. They could then have a period with a less restricted diet and then go back into treatment, ex explained Brunton. This would allow for a phased approach to weight loss, supported by advice from a dietitian allowing long-term weight loss goals to be realized. Uh, Brunton's teams have carried out potentially promising tests with Dental Slim. In one trial, participants lost 14 pounds in two weeks. As a result, they were motivated to continue losing weight. That's all well and good, but just one question, if we may. If you can release the magnets whenever you want, how is this uh, supposed to keep you from eating an entire cake? Uh, whether you like it or not, the fact uh, is that appearances matter even in medicine, and the dental slim really, really doesn't look or sound like an appealing device. The university's tweet announcing the dental slim has been received warmly, a world first and world last, I sincerely hope. This is a torture device and you should be embarrassed to be promoting it let, let alone be associated with it one user tweeted 
Oh, it hasn't been received warmly. I think I misspoke earlier. Um, Otago and UK researchers have developed a world-first weight loss device to help fight the global obesity pandemic. A literal medieval torture device, another uh, quipped. Uh, it's just going with uh, r- random people said. But, uh, yeah, this seems like a terrible idea. I mean, it seems like, you know, someone really addicted to overeating, they would just undo it, right? I mean, I, yeah, I was never on board with this idea from the start when you re- when you mentioned it. Yeah. But when you said they could throw I mean, up how, and uh, <laughs> choke, it, they had that. I didn't I even think say, about how, it. How are you gonna give blowjobs? <laughs> 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 Your woman's like, do you want me to be fat or do you want me to be able to give blowjobs? You can't have both. Sorry. Get oh, fat. Sorry. Sorry, my, my teeth are uh, <laughs> magnetized. You know, some people like that have bro- had broken jaws and stuff have to get their mouth wired shut. But yet, what happens if those people throw up? Are they fucked? Yeah, I, I guess so. I, I mean, maybe you're under uh, observation. But there's a story in our family because our uncle like broke his jaw. Or I, maybe this is the time he got shot in the head. I don't know. But his mouth was wired shut. But apparently, like, he still ate, like, an entire pumpkin pie, like, by shoving it around the back of his teeth. I think that was when he got shot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? He got shot? Yeah, when he was a kid, like, one of the, one of his, the neighbor kids, his friend, like, had his dad's gun. And he, and he was, like, pointing and clicking at him. He's like, don't do that. Don't do that. And he's like, it's not loaded. And then, like, the kid shot him. Oh, my God. Yeah, and I guess it was, like, one of those things where if it had been off just, you know, a centimeter or so one way or the other, like, it would have killed him. So he kind of really, you know, got lucky. Man, I mean, I hope that kid got some sort of punishment for doing something so stupid yeah back, back in those days probably got the shit kicked out yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right i guess it's aj story three all right uh, i have a couple of uh, different stories here but let's go to this one um dolphins deliberately get high on puffer fish oh yeah we did we did this one, oh, we did this one? yeah oh, I, did, okay. I did this one i've even seen pictures of it like <laughs> this is puffer fish is all blown up and this dolphin is like ramming him with his nose and the puffer fish is like <laughs> <laughs> and, like the dolphin's getting high as shit off this puffer fish alright uh, let's see a South Korean university has developed a commode that makes use of human waste by turning poop into power and they pay for contributions ooh, ooh money yeah. maker Tired of flushing opportunities <laughs> down the toilet? South Korea's Ulsan National, Uni- National Institute of Science and Technology created the BV, a revolutionary toilet that not only conserves water, but also converts human feces into electricity. According to BV creator John J- uh, Cho J. Wan, each human expels about one pound of waste a day, which then produces about 13 gallons of methane gas. That's enough gas to run a dishwasher. Wait, one, one big turd has 13 gallons of... Uh... Yeah, that seems like a lot. Yeah, I mean... I never knew. Well, they say that cows, you know, are fucking up the ozone layer. Oh, yeah, whatever. that's true. They really... well, well, like, I know, like, farmers will take, like, pig shit and throw it in a tank and get methane out of it. So, it's a similar concept, I'm sure. Fueled by feces, the BV graciously accepts your deposit and sends it to a storage tank where the concoction of microorganisms breaks down and oh, breaks down and methane gas is isolated. In return, BV will pay users in a digital currency called Gigool or Honey. The BV is <laughs> honey coins. <laughs> yeah. uh, the BV is currently being used to power a lab on campus, with students earning up to ten G Ghoul enough to buy a cup of coffee per day to use at the university store. Considering nice. the end result for a lot of coffee drinkers, we'd say that's a pretty full circle deal. <laughs> yeah, you drink your coffee. Oh, God. Gotta go run and shit in the correct Time toilet. Time to go pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can I pay for this in about five minutes? <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you think about it, like if every house was set up with like one of these toilets that like, you know, converted all the methane to energy to power your house, like those trips to Taco Bell would pay for themselves. That's true. <laughs> this is the way to That's go. That's probably like like they're doubling down, like they're getting the methane and then they're re- recomposting the shit into Taco Bell meat. <laughs> This is peak human civilization, guys. <laughs> Man, yeah, the future. That, that That's a sustainable energy right there. Yeah. <laughs> that seems like a surprising amount, yeah. So you could take one shit 
And wash a load of dishes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Run the dishwasher. Man. So, like, if you had an apartment complex and you just cashed in on all their shits. <laughs> You're oh, like, hey, yeah. hey, everyone, come shit in my bathroom. <laughs> well, you just run all the pipes into your tank. <laughs> you collect the dollar bills. Oh, my God. They're going to find a way to monetize people's shits and use them. At like, right. like they're going to like be like, oh, those just belong to me because they're in my building. So I get the money. <laughs> <laughs> you could give a bathroom to all the homeless people and be like. Free shit place. <laughs> you don't have to shit out in the freaking parking lot now. Holy shit. We'll pay the homeless for their shit. <laughs> uh, take a shit. Get a buck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just take a shit and there's like a little ch- change thing that goes ching, ching, ching. <laughs> <laughs> it spits out a bunch of pennies on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you gotta take a good shit. It can't just be some like little squirt, you know. <laughs> Insufficient. <laughs> Those honey bucket coins come out. <laughs> I mean, enough to buy coffee from a store. So I mean, we're, I'm coffee's like five bucks, right? More or less. Yeah. Three, so four, three, five bucks. Yeah, I mean, for one day, I'm guessing they only use the toilet like once or twice a day, still to make like five bucks or whatever. Not bad. All right, are we ready for Manifesto Round 3? Oh, are you guys ready for some hate mail? Let's do it. Meta-analysis of 83 studies provides very strong evidence for a negative relationship between intelligence and religion. Mm. (laughs) So if you're religious, statistically, I'm smarter than you. (laughs) Statistically. We don't believe in statistics. <laughs> well, they say uh, so. There's a little bit between the bell curves, but there's still very some very smart religious people and some very stupid atheists. Yeah, so. but I'm I feel like the smart religious people like they take advantage of the dumb religious people. You know, they know what they're doing. Ah, uh, there are some of those. Yeah, I always feel surprised when there's like an engineer or somebody who's religious. Yeah, I feel always feel like it's a discrepancy. <laughs> <laughs> Something's not right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah there. I mean, there are like uh, I've seen interviews with like you know scientists that are still religious, and it's like, yeah, it's, it is At a that little. Point, weird, I'm like, but... he doesn't seem like a very good scientist. Yeah, <laughs> like he must be like behind the curve right. when it comes. Yeah. Is that a, the, the doctorship of uh, fly fishing or something? <laughs> I mean, not to get political. I have a doctor in religious studies. <laughs> <laughs> not to get too political, because, I mean, obviously, there, there, there's, you know, smart Democrats and Republicans and really stupid Democrats yeah. and Republicans. But don't they say, like, on average, like, they've done these studies that show, like, Democrats tend to be more educated? Than Republicans, I, I want to say that's true. I, I, I think, think since college, Trump college came life around, kind of uh, what's the word hmm? brings people into the fold a little bit. So I think Democrats are more like, in, yeah, more likely to have been to college. Yeah, I want to say that's true yeah. because, like, uh, even like when you look at red states, like the blue pockets within red states are usually around the college towns. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. And, like, the most urban areas. So, like, in Georgia, Atlanta is, like, the most, you know, Democratic area. In Texas, it was Houston, Dallas, Austin, San Antonio. Yeah, that makes sense. Hey, I always, like, every election, people are like, oh, this is going to be the one where Texas turns blue. Huh. Do, you, do you think Texas is really, like, close to that breaking point? I mean, they must. I think so, because uh, it's getting that way more and more every election. And also, uh, they're they're making these voter laws to try to like prohibit like you know that vote from going right. that way. So I think they're worried about it. I think it's a real possibility. I mean, if Texas ever did actually go blue, I mean that would seem like the electoral college. You know, as much as I hate it, would um, I mean almost definitely go Democratic, right? Yeah. Because I don't It'd know how. It would be really hard to make up for a state that big. Yeah, I would think so. Mm-hmm. But then they'd probably flop back in four years. They they only flipped for Johnson, right? Or was were they Democrats up until Lyndon Johnson and then after him? 
I have no idea. Yeah. They were they were Democrat for a little while with Johnson. I know that much because he was from Texas. But otherwise, they were always like, or they've been Republican since. Well, I had another story, but we are kind of at the hour mark. Do you guys maybe just want to do a couple of these cards and go out? That yeah. sounds good to me. Um, if you could have only one dessert for the rest of your life, what would it be? I'm big on some pies, man. Hmm. Poontang pie. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, my uh, my teeth are shut. <laughs> got magnets on my teeth. Can't disengage these magnets. I think like I, it's I, like you just need your lips. <laughs> I one time went to a hotel that like had this amazing like banana bread pudding or something. So uh, I would if I could get that one for the rest of my life, I'd go with that. I have had some good bread puddings. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know how Batman is in really good shape? Maybe <laughs> that explains why he can't eat pussy is because he's got the magnets, <laughs> so he doesn't eat too much, and he stays in rip-roaring shape. He can't take his mask off. Yeah, he can't. That's why he can't move his neck either. He's maybe he's got some other magnets going on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a neck brace because he was in a car accident. <laughs> with this, I think I would go with either um, pumpkin pie or maybe just like a good old chocolate chip cookie. Mm. I think I might go with uh, coconut cream. Coconut cream pie. Coconut cream. That seems random. <laughs> what do you like the most about your best friend? I think I'm going to skip this one. You used to have a best friend. Yeah. I'm in the same boat where, like... I don't really have a best friend. Yeah, like, I had a friend, like, all through, you know, grade school and, and high school and everything. And it's like, it's not that I'm not friends with him, but since high school, we've only talked a handful of times. So we're not, like, super close, you know, anymore. So it's... Yeah. I don't know. It, the better friends I've had, I've been a little more talkative, kind of made up for my quietness, I think. And they're generally funny and a little more outgoing, I think. Like, the thing is, is, like, I have social anxiety, so, like, making friends isn't, like, easy. But I don't feel like I've even really been in a lot of, like, just, like, random situations where I'd even be in a position where I was, like, meeting people that could be friends. It's I've, weird. Been, I've been considering doing, like, meetup groups again. Like, I was going to look into those and see if there's anything that sounded interesting. Wait, you've done random meetup groups? I used to do Toastmasters a lot, and I really like that. You know, maybe if you did some of those, like... uh you know, go to one of those places where you can play board games. Yeah, there's there's board game meetups. Like, you could probably run into some people, meet some people there. Okay, we're just going to do one more, and then we're going to go out. If you found a fountain that gave you extra long life and the ability to heal from any wound or sickness, but the cost would be that you would have no friends, <laughs> would you drink from it? Why, why not? I think we just established, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. You're like, I don't have any friends. Like, yeah, I'm not going to have any. I think I'll just die. <laughs> that tied perfectly into the first one. And these cards are made for little kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's some tough, tough questions for kids, probably. All right, well, the benefits to not having friends is you can drink from an everlasting fount life fountain. Uh, We've chosen the right path, yeah. guys. They're not going to be your friends, so you can really rub it in. <laughs> well, if you've been watching this show, we're going to assume you have no friends. <laughs> so please get on our good side. Be friendly to us by giving us a like, subscribe, uh, comment on the YouTube clips and videos. Um, and why not? Well, if you had, fr if you do, by some uh, miracle, have friends, tell them to listen to the Stand Up Guys podcast because it's just so fucking good. And also tell them to be friends with us on the social medias. Guys, where can people find you on Twitter? I am at a name for this too, and that's the number two. At unsolicited S U G. And you can, of course, find me at Zach Jones Live. That's Z A C H J O N E S L I V E. And that's going to do it for all of our poppycock and shenanigans this week. Please, please, please tune in again next week. Bye, guys. Take care. Have a good one. <laughs>